Here we will look at the accounting for forward contracts. On January 1, 2020, GEMA Inc. entered into a forward contract to purchase US $6,000 for $6,336 Canadian in 30 days. On January 15th, the fair value of the contract was $40, reflecting the present value of the future cash flows under the contract. Assume that the company would like to update its records on January 15th. A, prepare only the necessary journal entries on January 1st and January 15th. Okay, so let's take a look here. So let's go January 1st, it's asking us for the journal entry. So what journal entry would we uh, record when we first enter into this contract. We're told that on January 15th, the fair value is $40, but what would the fair value be on January 1st? And the answer to that is that the fair value of the contract, the fair value of the forward contract is zero on inception. So no journal entry required. Okay, so that's a bit of a trick question. So whenever a company enters into a forward contract, on the date that they enter into it, the fair value is zero because it's a market transaction, therefore the fair value is zero. However, subsequent to that, we are told that on January 15th, the fair value is $40. So the fair value is $40. So therefore, how is GMA gonna record that? Well, they're gonna record debit, derivatives, asset, and they're gonna record credit, gain on derivatives. And this is where they're going to reflect the $40. So they're going to have a $40 asset sitting on the statement of financial position for $40, reflecting the fact that this, that this forward contract is now worth $40 to them. It's moved favorably for them. So it's a favorable movement of $40. And through their income statement, there's going to be a gain on derivatives of $40. That's recognized. Of course, this could easily be reversed if the contract flips back the other way, which could happen as easily as the next month. Okay, and number two, B, explain which financial risks the transaction exposes the entity to. Well, this contract results in price risk. So these are both A, aren't they? So B is there's gonna be price risk since this company has agreed to pay a fixed price for the US dollars, and the value of the US dollar may change. There's also credit risk because they're assuming that the other party will have the goods to deliver, the, the money to deliver the US dollars. And there's also liquidity risk. So there's credit risk and liquidity risk because they need to know that the company will come up with the funds to sell their side of the contract. And liquidity risk. This contract does eliminate cash flow risk because um, Gemma knows how much it's gonna pay for the US dollars now. So at least it knows that regardless of what the US dollar value is when this contract settles, they know that it's only going to cost them $6,336, which presumably enables them to make a profit. So they've eliminated their cash flow risk related to the currency exchange. Okay, let's take a look at part two. Part two says, assume the same facts, except that the forward contract is a futures contract that trades on the futures exchange. Gemma Inc. was required to deposit $30 with the stockbroker as margin prepare the journal entries to update the books on January 1st and January 15th. Well, if, if Jam is required to provide the stockbroker with a margin, it's simply a cash entry um, and a derivative deposit. And in this case, they would have been required to make this deposit on January 1st. So you can see that in part A, we said that there was no journal entry related to the forward contract on January 1st. But if there is, a margin that's required, 
And then the journal entry for the $30 would be debit, derivatives deposit, and credit cash. And this is where we're gonna record our $30. So the margin really isn't that complicated. We're literally just giving a deposit. So this would sit as an asset on our balance sheet because we, we have a deposit. It's like a receivable back and we're reducing cash. And that takes us through the conclusion of this question.